In this video, I'm going to show you an example of hand coding using Microsoft Word. One of the major approaches that we use to analyze qualitative data, such as interview transcripts, documents, or observation notes, is qualitative coding. When conducting a qualitative study, you most likely need to do a form of qualitative coding. Qualitative coding is a step in thematic analysis, meaning we first come up with codes and then we look for a pattern of shared meaning between the codes to develop them. Now, qualitative coding mainly includes taking things apart, which is analysis, which is normally followed by bringing things together or synthesizing and coming up with them. Now, we can either do qualitative coding by hand or hand coding, which is normally through the use of the normal tools such as Microsoft Word, or we can do it through the use of qualitative data analysis tools such as NVivo. Let's begin with hand coding using Microsoft Word. Before we begin coding, let's have a few definitions. Let's first define a code. A code is simply a label or an interpretive statement to particular information that's important to a research question. So, by performing qualitative coding, we are simply tagging or labeling important information in our qualitative data set. We are going to be adopting two approaches to coding, which are one, semantic coding, which is based on the shallow or obvious meaning of language, and two, latent coding, which is based on the deeper meaning of a given statement or passage. Let's use an example of an interview transcript for the research titled Experiences of Women with Immune Treatments for Fertility. Before we begin analyzing our transcript, using Microsoft Word, I want to first show you where I get transcripts that I use for my videos. And this is a place you can go and get transcripts that you can use to practice thematic analysis or qualitative coding in this case. So I get all my transcripts from this site called Figshare. You can see I've already searched this before. So you go to the Figshare website and then search transcripts and you get different types of transcripts that different scholars have shared freely for people to use, maybe to practice their coding and all that. Now, let's perform qualitative coding using Microsoft Word. For this video, I'm going to use an example of a transcript related to the topic of experiences of women with immune treatments for fertility. You can see these are the kind of codes that you are going to have. When we are doing qualitative coding using Microsoft Word, we use the comment function. You can see the different comments, and these are the kind of codes that we are going to have. So conceived easily, the first time trying to get pregnant, had an early miscarriage after pregnancy. Ideally, I'm going to go and delete all these comments, okay? And let's code together because this is a video about qualitative coding. Just to repeat that a code is a label or an interpretive statement to particular information that's important to our research question. Having known that, it means we only code information that's important to our research question. Let's code only information that's important to our research question and we provide labels and tags to that information. Let's begin. Let's read background or context question. Of course, yes, yes, actually, I got married in 2012 and we didn't try to conceive for the first three years and the first time we tried our chances I got pregnant for the first time. It was so easy and I was like oh my god I didn't expect that when it was in 2015. These are experiences of women with immune treatments for fertility. What we are getting here is and the first time we tried our chances I got pregnant for the first time it was so easy I was like oh my god I didn't expect that when it was in 2015. This statement here implies that I highlight, I right click, I go to new comment. This is how we do qualitative coding in Microsoft Word. And then I provide an interpretation for this statement or what this participant is trying to say. Because this study is related to experiences of women with immune treatments for fertility, I can say this code is conceived easily the first time okay we can get that and then i got pregnant and unfortunately i miscarried in the first eight weeks it was an early miscarriage highlight that and then let's call this as had an early miscarriage 
Now you can see how we are coding. We basically code sometimes based on what a person is saying directly. Other times we try to look for deeper meaning. These are two ways of coding, the two main ways. When we code exactly what a person is saying, we call that semantic coding or looking for the obvious meaning of certain statements. On the other hand, in some instances, we look for the deeper meaning so as to get the actual statement or what a person is trying to say. So that's called latent coding which is looking for a deeper meaning. Let me interrupt this video for a minute and inform you of my services. My first type of service that I offer is consulting for anything related to qualitative data analysis using NVIGO. You hop on a video call with me through Microsoft Teams or Zoom and I will help you become a pro with NVIGO in a few hours. I also provide a done for you data analysis service. I do the manual coding and provide a data analysis report with the necessary visual. Some kind of visuals I do include tables, hierarchy charts, and the framework matrix. Email or message me right now, details in the description. Let's continue. Yes, and then of course I was like a bit shocked, but then they said it's normal sometimes the first pregnancy. This happens a lot with many people and it's fine, don't worry. We can see that statement. This person is right click new comment is received significant support from health givers after the first miscarriage okay that's another code i stopped trying for the next year and i started again in 2017 we gave we gave it a try and i actually got pregnant in like two months or something so it was actually not that late i can highlight this statement and say conceived easily on the second attempt conceived easily on the second attempt so it was actually not that late and i also had another miscarriage the second miscarriage and in the same time we can see this statement is experienced A second miscarriage experienced a second miscarriage it was like eight weeks as well so of course at that time it was a bit I know that I think they consider it recurrent miscarriage when you have three miscarriages here in Egypt we don't do that we just started investigating it's easier for us to do that test and investigate on our own not like in the UK so I started to do some blood test and investigate what was happening and there was nothing wrong with me let's go up to the point where she's saying we just started investigating it's easier for us to test and investigate on our own not like in the UK so I started to do some blood test and investigate so performed some investigations after the second miscarriage performed some investigations after the second miscarriage and then there was nothing wrong with me there was nothing that showed up so I, w I was I didn't know what was wrong so he said okay we will move on so let's look at this actually from this point we can say right click new comment investigations did not show any causes of past miscarriage. We'll try again. I started to try to conceive next. Actually, I started in 2017 until 2019. So you can see, we tried again. I started to try to conceive next. I actually started in 2017 until 2019. I was trying to conceive each month and we and we are naturally nothing but where we went to some doctor they said no we don't need I IVF here we can say this statement that she tried to conceive from 2017 to 2019 is tried to conceive naturally or oh, between 2017 to 2019 without success but where we went to some doctor and said we don't need IVF you don't need anything right now your ovaries is normal everything looks good just a matter of time I want to quote this as initially advised not to procure IVF treatment 
by some doctors okay let's continue so i've been waiting and of course it was so frustrating for me each month i have my period i was like each month i was crying so not being able to conceive for more than three years led to frustrations and stress okay so after that we went to several doctors and nothing happened so we decided to a friend of mine went to the treatment in london actually so she recommended the center we can highlight that and go to new comment and say visited numerous doctors for fertility treatment without success so that's how you do qualitative coding in Microsoft Word. You just get the codes, and codes are interpretive labels or statements to particular information that's important to our research questions or objectives. These are the codes that we are able to get. Later on, you might combine these codes together to form themes. For example, conception journey can be a theme that includes so many of these codes. Then we have miscarriage experiences, which is another theme probably which can have different codes. So themes come later. First you do coding, then you look for a pattern of shared meaning between the codes to get themes. But this video is not about themes. I have other videos about that. This video is about qualitative coding. That's how we do qualitative coding through Microsoft Word by using the comment function in Word, okay? And if you look at these codes, you can see whether, or we can try to see, or to categorize them into the two main ways of coding, which is semantic coding that relies on the obvious meaning of words and the latent coding, which relies on the deeper meaning of words. So, conceived easily the first time. Let's look at this. At the first time we tried our chances, I got pregnant for the first time. It was so easy. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't expect that when it was in 2015. The code here is conceived easily the first time that's an example of a kind of a semantic code because this code doesn't do so much interpretation let's continue i got pregnant and unfortunately i miscarried the first eight weeks so it was an early miscarriage you can see had an early miscarriage which is the exact words that the interviewee uses that's another example of a semantic code let's continue received significant support from healthcare givers after the first miscarriage let's read the quote yes and then of course i was like i was a bit shocked but they said it's normal sometimes the first pregnancy this happens a lot with many people and it's fine don't worry so they received significant support from healthcare givers after the first miscarriage that's an example of a latent code then we have another code we gave it a try and i actually got pregnant in like two months or something that's an example or that's conceived easily on the second attempt that's an example of a latent code which is again not obvious but we can imply that from what the patient is saying then experienced a second mis miscarriage so it was actually not that late and i also had another miscarriage a second miscarriage that's example of a semantic code because we are just rephrasing exactly what the interviewee says then here we have performed some investigation after the second miscarriage investigations did not show any causes of past miscarriages when we are coding ideally we can have either latent or semantic codes like concurrent don't worry about whether they are latent or semantic codes that you are getting just worry about getting accurate codes so that's how we perform qualitative coding in microsoft word in the next video i'll show you how to perform qualitative coding in nv remember i provide done for you data analysis services and consulting services for any problem or challenge related to nvivo so check the link and email in the description and talk to me right away thank you